be more interested in yeah, if people asking questions in the dialogue. But anyway, just let me introduce myself uh, briefly. My name is Dwayne Roberts. I have been a resident of Anaheim here since the early 70s. Um, and in regards to my background, at least to understand that might make me qualified to talk about police issues, I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminology, Law, and Society from the University of California, Irvine. Uh, I'm a graduate of the Anaheim Police Department Citizens Police Academy. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I have been involved in a number of local issues, uh, ranging not only from, uh, not only deals with the police brutality and misconduct, but also uh, affordable housing, civil liberties, and civil rights, all right? Um, for example, a case in point uh, is that uh, when I started becoming uh, more active in the community, I was involved in issues dealing with what back then was called the Jeffrey Lynn community. Now it is uh, out of most of the village, all right? And uh, there were a lot of problems uh, with police in that neighborhood, and I uh, worked with a community organizer at that time uh, to deal with those issues, and I had frequent meetings and interactions with the police. And in fact, I, uh, a couple times were involved in surveillance of police as well, which was uh, interesting encounters. Uh, so they were very interesting encounters. Uh, in addition to that, um, besides that, I've been involved in other issues dealing with civil liberties and civil rights. I've organized numerous uh, demonstrations, and I've war demonstrations, and I've police brutality demonstrations, things of that nature, in multiple di in, in different cities in Montreal. So I, I was the uh, liaison between the groups that I was working with and the police. So I was in contact in organizing, help organizing the protests, make sure that the police would behave uh, the way they're supposed to. And uh, so I've had extensive experience with not only just Anaheim police, but Garden Grove police and Anaheim police uh, and multiple uh, law enforcement agencies. So um, one of the reasons why I've taken somewhat of an interest in oversight issues uh, partly is because uh, of my own experience dealing with the uh, pilot project safety board uh, not too long ago. Uh, it re uh, normally, in, in my opinion, I'm really skeptical of oversight. All right, very skeptical of oversight projects. Okay, and this is something I can discuss a little, little bit later. But um, uh, when I, uh, <clears throat> from time to time, I've been kind of in and out of politics, partly because of jobs and other things. And and uh, back in 2016, um, I uh, got back involved in Anaheim politics, and there was a situation where uh, I filed a California Public Records Act request with the city of Anaheim dealing with the uh, Pearson Park incident where the Ku Klux Klan came and there was a clash between uh, demonstrators and the local community, all right? And uh, I came across some information which contradicted statements that the former police chief, Rob Posada, made uh, at not only the city council, but also the public safety board. And uh, so, uh, and they were actually very damaging emails because they, they suggested that uh, Casada lied uh, both to the council and to the public safety board in regards to the sequence of events that took place that day. And what's important about that is that because uh, he said what he said, contradicting what internal police documents, even a, uh, an actual, um, a, uh, actual uh, um, 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 uh, press release that he approved of, okay, uh, that he had in possession of, uh, it changed the whole perception of what went on, okay? Instead of focusing on maybe errors of police tactic, it shifted it away and tried to blame demonstrators for some of the problems, okay? So, so um, I knew very well that the, um, the Public Safety Board at that time, the Public Pilot Safety Board, and just for people who don't know what the Public Pilot Safety Board is, uh, this was a body that the City Council, back in 2013, decided to quickly put together uh, to make it look like that we're dealing with something with, with, with keeping out and I'm just kind of all right? I mean, pretty much it's, it, it, it's just something that they hurriedly rushed together and with the whole boat saying, see, look, we're doing something about keeping this accountable, okay? Uh, and this was in the aftermath of the unrest that took place in uh, July, uh, July, August of 2012. Uh, for information, I was at City Council the night that the, uh, everything exploded. And it was a very interesting experience to watch riot squads, or I'm sorry, cops dressed in riot squad running back and forth inside like, uh, city council and dealing with demonstrators. Very interesting experience, very surreal too. But um, but the issue with Casada, um, I didn't expect the public safety board to do anything. To be honest with you, I thought the you know I just I just decided I'm going to go ahead and file uh, give them a copy of the complaint because the complaint really is not they had no power at that time to take complaints, none whatsoever. Okay, they had no power really to do anything 
And to some extent, they still don't have that power, but we'll get to that a little bit. But I gave them a copy of the complaint that I had filed, all right, with the city manager at the time who was uh, um, the previous city manager. What's his name? <coughs> Who's the previous oh. city manager? Emery, that, Mr. Emery. Oh, yeah, Emery. And, I, I, and again, I wasn't necessarily confident that anything would happen through Mr. Emery, too, given the way that these things would go on. Um, but um, surprisingly enough, I went through an interesting roller coaster ride, the whole bureaucracy. bureaucracy. Apparently, what I had done is I, uh, um, the, the, there were two or at least three people, and actually pretty much the, most of the board, they were very upset that there was hard evidence suggesting that the police chief lied to them. And, but I didn't expect this, all right? So what happened was, just in a nutshell, we tried to compress a little bit, is that um, I ended up having two interviews with the director of, uh, then director of human resources, he's no longer there, um, to have a discussion about all the evidence of what transpired. And I get a letter kicked back to me saying, sorry, there's no evidence backing your claim. You know, have a nice day, all right? And I dropped the issue, but I went and kept going back to the board, all right? In December board meeting, I brought up the issue, I asked, and I said, what, what does this board do? <laughs> and a lot of people were asking that question, what, 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 what is the role, okay? And to my surprise, and, to, and it was very shocking, but um, to my surprise, they acted, I think it was five to one, with one extension, to demand that Paul Emery uh, have the uh, Office of Independent Review, which is the private law firm that the city does, to handle police matters, uh, to uh, do a review of the complaint. And Mr. Emery was shocked. Uh, Mr. Emery was generally shocked at that because I guess he didn't expect that the board was going to take that action. And I didn't either. A lot of people there were there. So um, I began to realize that you know, despite this board's flaws, despite its weaknesses, uh, there actually is some value to have some type of oversight, especially when you plop right in front of them evidence, hard evidence that something has happened, okay? And I think that's probably the reason why they took action, or tried to make, take action. And so that's why I've kind of invested some time and energy on this issue, is because I do believe uh, even weak police oversight can have some effect. And just to let you know, understand that the Public Pilot Safety Board, although they have since been disbanded, um, it had an enormous impact on the city bureaucracy, and in fact, um, they had uh, city bureaucracy 11 months after they closed their investigation sent me another letter from the current acting city uh, uh, human resource director acknowledging that what I said was true, but they said that Casada made a mistake. Okay, that uh, he didn't. Or they said in bureaucratic language, they said that he uh, um, he uh, 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 wasn't aware of the times. So, I mean, I, I personally I find that ridiculous, but the fact is that there was a concession made. And that I see because of the actions not only of the Public Safety Board, but also to pressure from the media and all the rest of it. Because kept re the, the issue that gives a roller coaster ride through the, through the system. So, so let me explain what's going, kind of going on now, all right? Again, police